Throughout the history of the MLB, there have been nine teams that have relocated, with the last official relocation happening nearly 20 years ago in 2005 to the Expos when they moved from Montreal to Washington, D.C. to become the Washington Nationals. With the Oakland A's permanent home being completely unknown at this point, I thought it'd be fun to look back at five MLB teams that almost relocated but decided against it for unforeseen reasons. Before I begin, don't forget to leave a like as I'd love to be able to hit 50 likes on this video. And if you like this style of video, don't forget to subscribe so you can see more baseball history videos like this one. Anyways, let's begin. Back in 1902, the Milwaukee Brewers were the first of the original founding members of the American League to relocate, moving to St. Louis, Missouri to become the St. Louis Browns. This was a devastating blow to the city of Milwaukee, as this would be the first time they lost a professional baseball team. After 51 years without professional baseball in Milwaukee, the city was thrilled when Boston Braves, led by Lou Pernini, moved to Milwaukee in 1953. After 12 years and arguably one of the best teams in Milwaukee baseball history winning the World Series in 1957, having stars such as Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews, and Warren Spahn go up against the New York Yankees who were led by Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, and Whitney Ford, they won in seven games. After a World Series championship, professional baseball in Milwaukee ended once again in the 1965 season as new Braves owner William Bartholomew decided to move the team from Milwaukee to Atlanta after seeing the potential in Atlanta as it was growing rapidly in the 1960s, with the city being hungry for their first ever professional sports team. The city of Milwaukee was not happy about the Braves leaving considering the rest of the cities that lost their professional baseball teams during this time were Boston, St. Louis, Philadelphia, and New York, which were all cities with two baseball franchises, so Milwaukee was desperate to get a team back. Former MLB commissioner Bud Selig, who at the time was a successful Milwaukee businessman, was eager to return baseball to Milwaukee and had his eyes set on the Chicago White Sox, who were looking to find a larger fan base due to the Cubs being better liked overall in Chicago. This plan started as a way to improve ticket sales for the White Sox, as games were not selling well with the owner wanting to widen their audience. The team decided to play nine home games in Old County Stadium, the former home of the Braves, and the results were astounding. The Milwaukee home games made up nearly a third of the White Sox home games for the entire season, surpassing all their expectations. White Sox owner Arthur Allen was shocked by Milwaukee's love for the White Sox, a team that wasn't even theirs, and was ready to hand the keys of the franchise over to Milwaukee's newfound hero, Bud Selig. Unfortunately, MLB was not happy with the thought of a historical team like the Chicago White Sox moving to Milwaukee. Luckily, their prayers would be answered, and only four years later, the Seattle Pilots filed for bankruptcy, and Bud Selig and Milwaukee finally had their team, the Milwaukee Brewers. I know this sounds crazy, but there was a time where a three-way trade almost happened, but instead of players, cities were trading teams. This scenario was a direct result of the Seattle Pilots leaving to become the new Milwaukee Brewers. After the Pilots went bankrupt, Attorney General Slade Gordon sued the MLB believing that they violated the Sherman Antitrust Act by allowing the Pilots to relocate, arguing that the move deprived Seattle of its MLB franchise unfairly. For those who don't know, the Sherman Antitrust Act is a group of laws set in place in the United States that prevents companies from having monopolies or practice anti-competitive business practices. And since Gordon believed that the MLB had too much power after being able to rob Seattle of its first ever baseball team, he wanted the city to be compensated fairly, which forced the Major League Baseball to bring a team back to Seattle. During this time, Chicago White Sox, who were still struggling to get fans, were highly considered to replace the hole the Pilots left. However, just like in Milwaukee, the MLB wanted an American League team in Chicago. This is where the Oakland A's came to the rescue, who were looking to leave Oakland even back in the mid-70s. Owner Charlie Finley believed that the A's were unsustainable in Oakland as he was experiencing financial troubles and issues with their stadium, the Coliseum. And in 1978, Finley struck a deal to send the A's to the south side, although yet again, the American League wanted both teams to stay where they were. Luckily for Seattle, Slade Gordon won the lawsuit, forcing MLB to expand in Seattle, and in 1976, the Seattle Mariners were born. As you can tell, the White Sox were having a lot of troubles back in the 80s and 90s, and were still interested in leaving Chicago because of the issues with game attendance, their out-of-date stadium, Old Comiskey Park, and an overall declining in popularity due to the fact that the Cubs were being televised on WGN, which allowed them to gain a national following. During this time, Tampa Bay seemed like a promising option, as the city was experiencing a rapid growth in its population and was willing to do anything to get a baseball team. 
White Sox owner Jerry Reinsdorf had been meeting with Tampa Bay officials to see if they could reach an agreement on a new stadium for the White Sox to play in. However, ultimately, the deal to move the White Sox to Tampa Bay fell through, as Reinsdorf was able to reach a compromise with the city of Chicago, and in 1989, ground was broken for the White Sox new stadium, New Comiskey Park, now known as Guaranteed Rate Field. This agreement also kept the White Sox in Chicago and averted the team's relocation to Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay would attempt to acquire yet another baseball team before eventually being given the Rays nearly 10 years later. Although every baseball fan knows about the Giants moving from New York to San Francisco, I bet most baseball fans don't know that the Giants almost left San Francisco not too long after the city worked so hard to get them. Although the Giants' move to San Francisco allowed for some of the most iconic players in MLB history to shine, such as Willie Mays and Willie McCovey, by the 1970s, all the Giants' biggest stars from the 60s had been long gone, which left the team with little success and little money. Giants owner Horace Stoneham met with Canadian business Labatt Breweries about moving the Giants to Toronto. Talks of a new baseball stadium in Toronto were negotiated specifically for the Giants, however negotiations didn't get much further than that and eventually fell through, with the Giants being safe from relocation until the 1990s. The Giants were lucky enough to avoid relocation once, although the next threat of relocation was much more serious. After over 15 years of lackluster baseball in San Francisco, the Giants finally hit their stride, winning the 1987 division title, and in 1989, finally making it back to the Fall Classic in the battle for the Bay against the Oakland Athletics, where they would be swept in four games. Although it was an exciting time for Giants fans, this brief run of success wasn't enough for the city to approve funding for a new stadium, which resulted in the Giants being approved to move from one bay to another, as Tampa Bay was thrilled to finally have their baseball team after an unsuccessful acquisition of the White Sox. Or so they thought. In June of 1992, it was reported that the Giants had reached an agreement to sell the team to a Tampa Bay-based group, led by businessman Vince Naimoli. Baseball fans in Tampa Bay were ecstatic, with Tampa Bay Giants merchandise being able to be purchased and still can be found on eBay today, although you might have to break the bank for it. However, the proposed sale and relocation faced significant obstacles including legal challenges and an opposition from MLB's commissioner and former advocate for the Milwaukee Brewers, Bud Selig, as he claimed the team had too much history with the city to move. Ultimately, the deal to move the Giants to Tampa Bay fell through when the MLB owners voted against the sale in December of 1992. After the failed attempt to relocate to Tampa Bay, Bob Lurie continued to seek a solution to the Giants stadium issues in San Francisco. And in 1993, he reached an agreement to sell the team to a local ownership group led by Peter McGowan, which kept the Giants in San Francisco and privately funded. Washington, D.C. had a lot of trouble with keeping their Major League Baseball teams, with the first Washington Senators moving to become the Minnesota Twins and the second Senators becoming the Texas Rangers. It seemed like D.C. would never see another baseball team. However, that changed in the early 1970s as the Padres were nearly bankrupt and Washington, D.C. officials were eager to bring a Major League Baseball team back to the city. In 1973, San Diego Padres owner C. Arnold Smith agreed to sell the team to D.C.-based businessman Joseph Danzansky. Danzansky intended to move the Padres to D.C. and rename them the Washington Stars, losing the Padres' identity entirely. It seemed like everything was confirmed, with even Topps baseball cards being printed with members of the Padres being simply named the Washington National League. Luckily for Padres fans, this didn't happen. McDonald's president Ray Kroc outbid Danzansky and took over the team, keeping the Padres in San Diego. D.C. was then forced to live without a team for the next 31 years, where the team that was a part of the 1969 expansion, along with the Padres, the Montreal Expos would fill that role. Before the Montreal Expos moved to DC to become the Nationals, the team had hopes of keeping the Expos name, albeit through several failed proposals in different states, those being North Carolina, New Jersey, Virginia, and Oregon. This by far in my opinion is the most fascinating of all the baseball relocations as none of these states ever ended up getting a baseball team. The Expos facing financial difficulties and struggling with attendance issues in Montreal explored various options for relocation. The first was North Carolina due to its growing population, strong economy, and interest from local officials and investors in bringing a Major League Baseball team to the state. Three cities were considered as potential locations, those being Charlotte, Riley, and Durham. However, despite interest from North Carolina, no deal ever materialized. 
finalized. After plans for North Carolina fell through, New Jersey, specifically the Meadowlands Sports Complex in East Rutherford, emerged as a potential location due to it being close to the New York metropolitan area with the idea that it would draw in more fans. The New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority, which operated the complex, showed interest in bringing the Expos to New Jersey. They had discussions with the Expos about building a new baseball stadium as part of the Meadowlands Sports Complex to accommodate the team. However, just like North Carolina, they couldn't come to a deal with the city. The Expos didn't stop here though, with plans to move to Northern Virginia emerging because of it being close to Washington DC, which was experiencing a growing population and economy during the 2000s. One notable proposal involved the city of Alexandria, Virginia, which offered a site for a new stadium. The proposal, known as the Potomac Yard Site, was seen as a potential location for the new ballpark if the Expos were to relocate to Virginia, although, yet again, the plans fell through. After failing negotiations with numerous states out east, the Expos had one final hope to keep their identity, this time in Portland, Oregon. With Portland having a dedicated fan base surrounding the Trailblazers, the Expos hoped that the city would secure enough public funding for a possible new home in Portland. After having discussions with the MLB officials about moving to Portland, the Expos failed to secure yet another deal, and the Expos were eventually relocated to Washington, becoming the Washington Nationals. One common theme throughout each of these relocations is that the MLB, specifically Commissioner Bud Selig, didn't believe relocating teams was a good solution as it would hurt the fans while also being a huge risk for the MLB to undertake moving all of these teams around. Although most of these cities ended up getting teams in the late 90s and early 2000s, some cities are still waiting for the opportunity to host Major League Baseball. Thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Have a great day.